all right so hi everyone today i'll be attempting this code forces round which is code forces round 703 and it is a dev2 round so it will be rated for me so yeah let's see how it goes and i'll also continuously speak along the video so that uh, you can have a fair understanding of how i am approaching the problems Okay, so I hope I am recording. Yeah, it is getting recorded. Okay, so let's go. So we have in stacks of blocks. So I had stack contains HI blocks and its height is the number of blocks in it. So it stack contains HI blocks and its height is the number of blocks in it. Okay, we can uh, in one move you can take a block from the i stack and put it to the i plus hundred stack and you move the sequence of height strictly increasing. Uh, okay. Stacks don't disappear. It has zero blocks. Okay, that is fine. So, we want it to be increasing, right? So, the first one cannot basically change. So, we can keep the first one as zero. Then, we can keep the next one as one. And it should work because we are convert we are transferring all the stacks to the last one then. So yeah, it can be zero as well. So we'll keep the first one as zero only. Some plus equals equals plus equals to error at i. And if uh, a sum is greater than or if sum is less than required. Then you can say that it is not possible. Otherwise, you do some minus equals to required. And I will just quickly declare this variable. Okay, so this should ideally work. So we are having all of them as yes, right? Okay, so I did not do a required plus plus here. Okay, so it seems fine and I'll quickly submit it. So yeah, that one passed. And moving on to problem B. And we also have C1 and C2. Okay, so there will be subtasks here. That is fine. My friends live in N houses. Each house is located on a 2D plane. 
in a point with integer coordinates there might be different houses located in the same point okay the mayor of the city is asking you for places for the building of the eastern exhibition mm, you have to find the number of places points with integer coordinates so that the summary distance from all the houses to the exhibition is minimal the exhibition can be built in the same point as some house the distance between two points okay it is the manhattan distance basically so here mod x is the absolute value of x hmm. fine so we need to find a point such that we have to find the number of places for places of the building okay we have to find the number of places so that the summary distance from all the houses to the exhibition is minimal okay so we'll have to add up all of that right yeah that is fine so we need to find the number of such points here Okay, so if this was the point, then this is the minimum one. Yeah, fine. And all of them will give the same answer. That is the point here. Right. Okay. So this one seems fine as well. Mm. Okay, so we need to basically pick x and y right and they can be very large so that does not make any sense but let's say i find an x and y then i can simply find the distance right yeah now let's see okay So if I have the points here, here. Okay, so if this is let's say the polygon, then I don't see any point in having our whole point outside this polygon. Like, does it make sense here? Because we have to take the sum, right? So for a triangle, let's say at this point, ah, this one seems to be very tricky here. Single integer number of different positions for the exhibition. Okay. So if this would have been only a single 1D coordinate system, then we would have placed it somewhere here, right? I mean, this would have given the same answer. This would have given the same answer, and all of these would have given the same answer, right? So yeah, like that is like only adding, right? So we can consider our x and y's separately. Because here all these x's will give the same answer. And we can consider the... Uh, yeah, right. This one should work. So we should consider the x's and x coordinates and y's, y coordinates differently. And we should consider the median of both of them. And all the points that basically lie. So if n is basically odd, then we only have one point. But if n is even, then we have this whole range.
ser saído desse contexto. more optimized way so like mm, I don't know maybe the intended complexity is something like n square This is odd, then we only have one point. N by two for five, this will be let's say no for four, it will be n by two. Hmm. N by two minus one. I think because I'm considering only the median points here and X and Y is I'm treating them differently. Okay. that we're getting okay so basically this should have been minus right okay this one works fine now So yeah, this one works fine. So I'll submit it now. Great. So moving on to problem C now. And there are sub parts here. So I think I should read both of them before attempting them. This is an interactive problem. Number of queries that we can do, right? Yeah. There is an array A of n different numbers. In one query, you can ask the position of the second maximum element in a subsegment. Find the position of the maximum element in the array no more than 40 queries. Okay. Mm, after asking the segment, you will be given the position of the second maximum from this segment in the whole array. Uh, where is all the elements after asking the segment you will be given the position of the second maximum from this segment in the whole array okay so if we get the second maximum then it cannot be the maximum right yeah so if you have you can ask queries left in turn l to r the answer is the index of the first second maximum of all elements 
just beforehand okay p is the index of the maximum element in the array fine so it gives 1 and 5 so after asking 1 and 5 the segment the second maximum is 4 right yeah so after asking this 1 to 5 segment the 4 is the second maximum and its position is 3 after asking the 4 to 5 segment 2 is second mm -hmm. to max value and its position in the whole array is 4 ok right fine so if you have 3 then now it depends on which side do we want to go here ok no more than 40 queries so something like binary search is coming to my mind because log of 10 to the power 5 will be approx 20 So if I query for the whole part, then I get the position of the second maximum. Yeah. Now what if I query for the first half? If I get the position of the second maximum, we have at max 40 queries here and for this one we have at max 20. Okay. So something like binary search is definitely coming to my mind. And So when you get the position of the second maximum, what information do I have for this whole array then? I'm not getting the position of the maximum here. So let's say I consider the first two elements. Yeah. So let's say I consider the first two elements and it gives me this position. So then this one is the maximum, right? Then what I do is let's say I query for the next four. Then I know this one is not the answer, so it basically gives me the second maximum. Oh, let's say this one is the second maximum. Mm -hmm. Then what happens is then, then we have this and this. Okay. So when I get the position of the second maximum, the maximum can lie here or it can lie here yeah mm, 40 queries so let's just query for the whole part then I get here So then there are two choices, either to go here or to go here. And what I do is I query for this part and I query for this part. Now the thing is that we are getting the second maximum here. So let's say this one is the second maximum position for this one. And this one is the second maximum position for this one. And let's say I don't query for the half part. Now we know that the second maximum the maximum can occur here or it can occur here okay let me try it again so let's say i have this part and i query for the first half and i query for the second half then i know that if this is the second maximum and this is the second maximum so the maximum can lie here or it can lie here right then there are three basic positions that we have 
so what i do is first of all i query for the whole part then these two positions are already second maximum so they are eliminated and if i query for the whole part i get a second maximum uh, so the maximum can lie in either halves right yeah and is it a permutation let's see yeah it's been given a permutation so there is only one maximum and it can, it can lie on, in only one of the halves so let's say I query for this half and I query for this half so what happens is I get a second maximum position here and I get a second maximum position here so there is m1 m2 m3 and m4 so m2 and m3 cannot be i mean if uh, we get the index as m2 and we get it as m3 so m2 and m4 cannot be the maximums only m1 and m4 can be right now what happens is i mean we already we obviously don't know about these m4 and m1 here we only know about m2 and m3 so let's say then i query for the whole part so if i get something apart from these two then i know that it is one of m1 or m4 but uh, let's say i get m3 only that it is the second maximum then i can say that our answer lies here only But what if I get a different position? Then we know it is either M1 or M4. Right here. So then what do I do with M1 and M4? Then if M1 is this position and I don't know about M4 then. So if it is this one, then I can move it here that you know my maximum will lie somewhere here. Because okay let's consider this again so let's say i divide my array into halves and i have m1 and m2 here and then i have m or let's say let's do this m and second max m1 and sm1 and we have m2 and sm2 so when i query for this part i'll get sm2 when I query for this part, I'll get SM1. Then let's say I query for the whole part and I get SM1 only. Then we can say that SM1 is greater than SM2. And uh, M1 is greater than this right here. M1 is greater than SM1 and SM1 is greater than SM2. But we can also have M1 and M2, right? We still don't know anything about M1 and M2. Let's say I get a different position. Okay, we have to consider all of that. SM1 and SM2 but I don't know M1 and M2 so what I can do is if this is SM1 I can query only for this part right this is one of the queries that I can do and we know that for this part sm1 is the second maximum and for this part sm2 is the second maximum so for the whole of this part it will be either we get m1 here mm. 
Und dazu die ganze Zeit ein bisschen kalt. If you still get SM1, SM2, then we know our answer is here. For sure, because, uh, yeah, if we don't, okay, 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 that is fine. So, if I query for this part and I get SM1 and I get SM2, and if I query for this part, then if I still get SM2, then my M2 is somewhere here. So if I don't get, okay. So if I uh, okay, I know my SM, I know my M2 then it will be here then I do the same thing and if this is M1 and if I get this is SM1 then what I know is my M1 is here my M2 is here so then if uh, I query for this whole part and I get one of these. Okay, but if I get one of these, then I can consider the only the other one. But let's say I get SM2 here, then I know my maximum is here only. And if I get SM1, then I know my maximum is here only. Right, yeah, that is one way. And uh, so, first of all, so let's say this is the array. And I query for the first half, and I query for the second half, and I get SM1. And I get SM. Let me take it here and I get SM2. Then I do, then what I do is, then I query for this part. And if I still get SM2 as the answer, then I can say my M2 lies here. Otherwise, I can say that my M2 lies here, right? Yeah. This is fine. So that is like one query, then this is one query, and then there is another query. Similarly, for this one, what I do is, I consider this part and if I get SM1 only, then my M1 is here, otherwise my M2 is M1 is here. So if both of my M1 and M2s are here, then what I can do is then I can reduce my search space to this. Right here. And if my M2 is here and my M1 is or let's say my M2 is here and my M1 is here, then what happens is then No, no, but when will I, when I will query for the whole part, then I'll know. So, so let's say I get my positions of M1 and M2. And then what I do is, then I query for the whole part. So it's like five queries already now. So then I query for the whole part. And uh, if I get, let's say, SM1 here that it is the second smallest then I know my M1 is the uh, I mean M1 is the greatest if my SM1 is the second greatest so then then I can reduce my search space to this let's say I get M2 as the answer then also I can reduce my search space to this but let's say I get M1 as the answer then I can reduce my search space to this and similarly if I get hmm, I basically know my position of M1 and I know my position of M2 after four queries and one of M1 or M2 has to be the answer. So when I query for the fourth, fifth time, if I get M1, then I know M2 is the answer and it will be somewhere here and I can reduce my search space. Otherwise, if I know it is M2, or let's say it is SM2, then I know 
my answer is uh, m2 and i'll get the position so if it is anywhere different I, if i consider the second maximum in the whole array if it is different than these two and let's say i get my second maximum here then i know that m2 is the answer right yeah And if I get SM1 as the second maximum, then also I know that, okay, so if I get SM1 as my second maximum after the final query, then I know M1 is my answer, right? But if I get SM2, if I get SM2, then I know that the only element greater than that is M2. And I can reduce my search space to this. But let's say I get some an element here. Then what happens is, then I know that this has to be M1. Right, yeah. This has to be M1 and we can simply reduce our search space again to this. So that is like three queries and we are reducing it to half. But log of 10 to the power 5 will be approx 20 and it will be 60 queries then okay so we cannot have 60 queries we only need 40 here then what do i do Can I reduce my search space even further? That is the question here. So if I get SM1, then I know this is the part that I need to look for. If I get SM2, then I know this is the part that I need to look for. And uh, yeah, so if I get SM1 as my answer, then what do I know? Or let's say that I've reduced my search space to this that I need to find M1 now. Now I already know the SM1 here. So I won't have to query it again. That is the point. So then I will be doing it in only. Oh right. That is great. So then I don't require three queries at every point. I require three queries only at the first time. And then I only require two queries every time. Because I already know the position of the second maximum then. Right, so I think this should work and it should work in um, 40 operations I think because we have something like 19 into 2 and plus 1 here. So this should work in 40 I guess. But yeah, it will be a little hard to code. And I'm not sure if there is an easier way for this. So this seems to be an internet issue again. Now 225 people have already done this. So if I go about solving it with that way, should it work? I mean, I'm doing approx 40 queries here, but can I optimize it and submit it finally for both of them? I won't be doing more than 40 here. That is for sure because it is only three at the first time. Then every time we're doing all two only. So yeah, that is not an issue, but uh, um, can I reduce it to 20? Can I reduce it to completely log in? Okay, that is like 16 so i can do one extra query one or two at max i cannot do more extra queries now okay so this one seems fine to me in 40 queries but 
how do I optimize it further? So let's say I have SM1 optimizing it further so if I get SM1 and I get SM2 can I do every other operation in only let's say one operation can I do that so let's say I have this one and I know that my answer lies here somewhere so I already know my second maximum here now so I know I, either it lies here or it lies here right yeah. so let's say I query for this part Or let's say I query for the first half then if I get SM1 again then I know my M1 lies here otherwise if I query for this one okay what if I get the SM1 I mean the second maximum for the whole array then what I do is I query for this part yeah well, this should work I guess then I query for this part <clears throat> if I still get SM1 then I know my answer is here otherwise I know my answer is here right yeah but uh, now first of all I'm going with the uh, complete maximum here so I think this should even work in 20 operations like uh, what if I just find the second maximum of the whole array and then I compare this part so let's say I query for this part and if I still get SM1 then I know my M1 lies here but let's say I don't get this and I get it, uh, get my SM1, I mean the second maximum here, then I know my maximum for this range is SM1 and then I can move to this part, right? But how can I say that this is optimal? Like, how can I say that my maximum will lie in the shorter region? I mean, it can very well lie here and then I have a very big chunk here. Okay, so can I do that? Then I also know the second maximum. So then my M1 lies here. So if four lies here and it is four, let's four, let's say is uh, very close to five, then I will get that region only. That is fine. But let's say I get my 5 here and I get my 4 here and there are a lot of elements here and then there is some element here. Then I get my 5 very far, far away from 4. So, hmm. let's say I query for the first half. And I get my this answer and then let's say I query for this half and then I get my this answer fine but how is it helping that is the point now the 40 what I think will definitely help So let's say I have my whole area and I query for the second maximum and it lies somewhere here. Then I query for this part. And if I still get SM1, then my maximum lies here, right? But what is the guarantee that I'm not? covering the bigger region now so it can be like very far away and then I can get my T here right so it can be something like 5 4 yeah
Okay. So I'm not sure if I should submit it for the 41 only. Because then it will be a lot of time waste. Yeah, coding that one up and then deciding for this one will be a lot of time waste. So it will be better if I am able to get it done in 20 queries, queries is only. So let's say I get this second half. Let's say I get this whole. Okay, how about I go, go about doing it like this? I get the second maximum for this first half and let's say this is the one and let's say I get my second maximum again for this uh, region here only then I know that my maximum lies here right yeah that is fine or So I think I should try it for 20 queries, 40 queries only. So yeah, and I have to take care that my code covers some edge cases as well because So if star equals equals to n, then I can simply print and I will have to flush it. So I am using endl here. <coughs> so this is one base case. If star equals equals to n minus 1. And then second maximum is known. Then what I do is uh, then I print So that is another base case. So they should do the work as well. 
now i have to consider the other cases right yeah so So what if I just say that you get your own second max and I get my own second max and then we can compare them. Yeah, but that does not work, right? So I know my second max left and I know my second max right. Hmm. And then I already know my whole second max right. So if second max equals equals to minus one, then I do this that you know I simply can. Second max. Mm. Right. So now I have to think. No more second max now. So now I know this. So equals equals to hmm, equals equals to second max left. So if it is equal to second max left, then I know that my answer is in the left half. So then what I do is then I reverse and I pass in my Second match left. 
yeah so that is fine if second equals equals to second max left then i pass in my second max left and i consider only the left half but let's see that uh, So this is fine now and I will just quickly remove this part because that is not required. Yeah. So now I have to give the input only and I will check it with the sample one. So I have 5. Okay. So have I taken the test cases as well? give it the input so I'll give it 5 so it query is 1 to 3 so 1 to 3 number of second max have 4 or screen index at uh, its index is 3 right yeah then it says 4 to 5 then I say that my second max is at 5 here yeah. okay so it is actually at 4 so then it says 1 to 5 and I say 3 right so then it says 1 to 2 and I give it what should I give it? I should give it, I should give it 2 here. Yeah, this one seems fine now. So I think I'll do it. And I'll quickly check my code once to see if everything is fine. So these are like the base cases. If start equal equals to end, then we know. Then if equal equals to end minus 1, then we know this. Yeah, so I'm doing at max two queries at every time. Also, like okay, so this one passed, and I'm pretty sure that it would have been approx forty operations only. But now I need to check it for C2 and a lot of time has already been wasted. So yeah. let's see how to do it in 20 operations now. Mm -hmm. 